So this recording's been made just so I can explain the certain parts of the movie that actually fit in with the assessment criteria. I don't know if you've actually picked them up, it's a little bit obscure sometimes. So um, yeah, let's begin. This movie is actually based off a typical drug sort of story. A person takes drugs, but later on they're able to overcome their addiction and come out of it as a better person of because of it. Um, we see this in our main character, the prince. Uh, he is one of those people who craves a lot of attention. This usually comes about by a lack of which when he is younger. And as we can see by his father, the king, it's not really the sort of person who would really give his son a lot of attention. He's busy doing other things and just sort of lets him run wild. Um, we can also see that he just sort of attempts to be cool by making up all these things that he's done which he really hasn't like slaying a red dragon and stuff. Um, so this leads him to go be rather desperate. He needs to do something that will make him cool in the eyes of his subjects or peers in real life. This leads him to the idea that, oh yeah, I'll go defeat the Dark Lord and I'll save my subjects and then they'll love me forever. The real life equivalent of which is I'll go and take drugs or drink lots of alcohol at this party because then people will notice me and think that I'm cool. Uh, a lot of times people just think you're stupid, um, but people don't realise this because they're so desperate to be seen as cool in the eyes of their peers. This leads him to this confrontation with the Dark Lord, who at this point is sort of representing like a drug dealer. Um, he drugs him, gives him the drug, and now he's helpless. He can't do anything about it on his own. Luckily, he brought some help, and that takes the form of the wise wizard. The wizard helps him through his time of being under the influence of drugs. He even gives him an antidote for it so he can help fight it off. The wise wizard in this instance is representing like a GP or a helpline or a rehabilitation center that you know anyone in real life can go to um, to get help and they will be there to support you throughout your final confrontation which is represented by the final fight with the Dark Lord. At this point the Dark Lord's character sort of changes to become a representation of that final obstacle of getting rid of your drug addiction. And the defeat of him brings about this sense of, yes, I overcame my, the drug addiction. However, you don't boast about that sort of thing like you would have at the beginning. He realises what he did was stupid and he's become a better person because of it. And that's sort of the same sort of thing that happens to a person in real life. There's still two more characters in this film that I haven't really gone over yet, and that is his friend and his servant, who, big reveal at the end, is actually the Dark Lord's servant. That sort of reveal sort of shows that anyone could be involved in this, in this world, this horrible world of drugs. And you, you can't really know until they've told you. I get, in this sense, it's sort of encouraging people to speak out, yes, I'm involved in this, because eventually you will get cast aside and rejected because you're not needed anymore by the drug dealer, which we see happens during the final battle between the Prince and the Dark Lord. Uh, the final character is the friend, who doesn't really do much during the entire movie, but he's sort of there to show that a lot of your friends when you're going through this, have no idea what they're supposed to do, so they don't do anything. And then his reveal that he was evil all the time at the end was a representation of the fact that sometimes you find out that they weren't really your friends after all, and in fact, they were probably the ones that got you onto the drugs in the first place. It's sort of a deep sort of interpretation of the whole friend is actually the bad guy sort of trait, so we thought that was pretty fun. The drug we used in our film is actually known as hysine or scopolamine, it's a real thing, devil's breath. 
there's a lot of controversy around it because people think that it can brainwash you. Uh, that That's actually not true. It's used to treat motion sickness and vomiting. There can be some rare adverse side effects, such as hallucinations and seizures, but that is very rare. And really, we just wanted to use this drug to create a sort of base drug that sort of represents all the sorts of drugs that are out there. Something that people could just go, oh, it's drugs. Okay, I know what that is. Instead of having a specific thing where people might not know exactly what's going on. It also fit very well into the fantasy theme we had going on as well. So yeah, that's the sort of thing we were trying to represent with our film, though it is rather obscure. Um, yeah, we, we really hope this cleared uh, that sort of thing up, and uh, we'll leave it with you to think on it and Marcus. Thanks.